Okay. Jay, you're going to hit the table nice and loud for us? Good. This house would not place limits on scientific research. Science, the first speaker for the prop side. Let's welcome her. We are position. Uh, we are proposition to stand here to promote that this house would not place limits on scientific research. Research. First, uh, our team's burden is to prove that lifting limits is better in the long run than putting limits on scientific research as we have now. Now, I, as, a, as, as the first speaker, will uh, 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 state some. Uh, state the policy and uh, necessity, and the second speaker, Do Hyung, will talk about practicality and benefits of this policy. And third speaker, uh, Chang Woo, will <coughs> sum up the debate. Debate. Uh, first, I'll, uh, let's, uh, I will define some um, words in the motion. Uh, limits is to compl complicate or hinder through legislation or jurisdiction or this. Discouragement and scientific research means con studies conducted that uh, through which scientific through scientific methods which will uh, develop uh, which will improve our human life. And our policy is this: uh, governments lift and overturn legislation and court rulings that hinder or illegalize scientific research. And I'm going to uh, explain the necessity of this policy. Oh, ma'am. No, thank you. After the Pangos of scandal, Korean government reinforced limits on scientific research in Korea, especially in gen uh, bio, bio engineers. As you, all, as you all know, Korea has been leading this field, especially stem cell research. <coughs> However, Korea is now falling back behind other countries who are stimulating scientific research by removing limits. Uh, under Sengmyong Yunlipop, Korean government set the limit that in embryo available for research use should be those which were planned to be disposed of or left after harvested for uh, being harvested for medical reason. And domestic researchers are against these limits as they are hindering their research and research. Oh, thank you. And Korean government also limits cross nuclear substitution. And however, it is because of uh, studying on it, uh, it means that uh, we can uh, work on animal uh, nucleus and human nucleus together. However, uh, it is it is weird because studying on animal embryos prior to the actual research on human embryos, uh, if they are done efficiently, it can it is uh, more ethical and logical. And in contrast to this, the U.S. allowed currently uh, allowed or. Uh, Embryo reprint, allowed embryo reprint and reprint of monkeys, and England allowed use of animal embryos. Not only uh, and like this, other countries are or promoting their research to afford the uh, long run benefits for human mankind. Uh, hum mankind, but Korean Korean government is now just limit uh, trying to solve the matter by just limiting scientific research. Not only this, Korean universities. <coughs> no, thank you. Usually require papers even before research is done and research starts. That is one reason why so many young talented scientists are discouraged to conduct creative scientific research. Korean government is currently too much tied to philosophy and the quite a form itself. And we need we need to promote this policy both for this policy because uh, our our. Uh, the engine for human development has been scientific research. However, excessive limits and regulations are now challenging to those talented scientists who may con con uh, contribute greatly to human life. Ma'am. Thank you. So, <laughs> Chokpyo. <laughs> 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 you sorry. Hello, sir.
Hey, Young is the first speaker for the upside. Let's welcome him. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1945, August 9th, in Nagasaki, Japan, the United States dropped, a, uh, dropped, a, uh, dropped an atomic bomb, and it killed millions of people, regardless of sex or age. Men... Thousands. Hmm? thousands. Over a hundred thousand, oh, yeah. not millions. Over a hundred thousand. <laughs> regardless of men, women, children, they all died or either suffered from uh, lasting physical damages, such as burn, uh, severe burns. Ladies and gentlemen, this incident in Nagasaki is a good incident that shows what science, science can do to mankind. <clears throat> now, as the first speaker for the opposition, I would like to accomplish the following things in my speech. First of all, I would like to present some rebuttals and questions to the uh, proposition side, and then I would like to move on to build on our substantive case. And then, if I have time left, I will summarize my speech. Now there are some uh, questions that we have regarding the uh, proposition's, proposition's case. Um, and the first one is about the definition. The first, uh, the first speaker for the proposition side has mentioned that has defined scientific research as a study conducted through th scientific methods that which will improve human lives. However, ladies and gentlemen, Scientific research doesn't necessarily benefit human lives. Of course, it can benefit. However, it, can, uh, it also has side effects and it can bring detrimental effects to hum mankind. And also, the opposition did not get a clear policy from the proposition. Before How, see, no, thank you. What exactly is their policy? How will it be funded? Who? No, thank you. So we'd like to get a more clear policy from the proposition. In response. And also, no, thank you. And also, the, the case that proposition has uh, came up with is, all they talked about was these incidents in Korea about Hwang Sung and other uh, incidents. However, we have to look at it from the, uh, a bigger view, from the whole world. In, as for the whole world, there are things, scientific researches conducted in places like uh, Russia, United States, Afghanistan, and these in these places, scientific researches are sometimes research used for detrimental. Can't say research. It's not enough. Research can be used for detrimental means. Now, moving on to our arguments, we have three arguments, <coughs> and they are that first of all, scientific research can be harmful, and it has a uh, in that it has it has potentials to be abused in destructive ways. Our second argument is that it, uh, scientific research er, is harmful also in other ways. And our third argument is that uh, the policy of the proposition is unbeneficial. <coughs> now, as for the first argument, that uh, scientific research is harmful and that it can, be, uh, it can be used in destructive ways, there are many examples, many, many evidences that we can uh, find in today's world. For example, as I mentioned in the beginning of my speech, atomic bombs, hydrogen bombs are all examples of how technology can be abused. And also, I don't know if you, any of you have seen the movie Res Resident Evil. In the movie, they are... Before you proceed... It's a goddamn movie! <laughs> movie, yes it's a movie, but it's a... Um, movies can become true. It can be a reality. <laughs> <laughs> there are many oh, no. <laughs> Okay, if you insist that it's a movie, there are real life examples of how biochemical weapons are used against mankind. For example, uh, Saddam Hussein has used uh, biochemical weapons against the Kurds. Uh, and this can also be interpreted as, a, ex as an example of how technology can be misused. Science can be used. Oh, thank you. And also through scientific research, uh, spying technologies can be developed, which can lead to privacy problems, such as um, satellite CCTVs and pri uh, 
transparency cameras, which uh, violate the privacy of individuals. Well, thank you. Out of order. And for these reasons, because scientific, uh, scientific research has the potential to, uh, in becoming a detrimental thing for mankind, we beg you to oppose this motion. Steps of the leader of opposition, I'm also going to tell you a short story about limiting scientific research. Now, Sergeant Eric Hicks was a soldier in Iraq and he was doing a patrol duty when a roadside bomb went off and killed his entire platoon as well as injuring him. First of all, he didn't think that he was in that much of trouble. He's like, all right, let's be cool. It's okay. You're injured, but I think everything's still there. He reached for his eggs. They weren't there. Reached, he reached for his face. Half of it was gone. But, ladies and gentlemen, he was moved to an emergency facility where, without their help, he could have, uh, he may well have died. But with a face implant and and uh, bio uh, and bionic legs, he uh, he survived the ordeal. And he is, even though not perfect, is in pretty good shape today. Without scientific research allowing face and leg plantation, could this have been achieved, ladies and gentlemen? No, it could not have been. That's why we say that no limits should be placed upon scientific research. Sir, thank you, sir. And rebutting the opposition's case, which in a nutshell said that scientific research can be in some cases bad, I'm going to tell you two things. The first example brought up by the opposition was that uh, was the example of atomic bombs. But ladies and gentlemen. There may be setbacks in terms of scientific research. Yes, we admit that. We admit that some bad things could occur through scientific research, and the atomic bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki was certainly one of them. But look at the bigger picture, ladies and gentlemen. How, how has the human race benefited from scientific research? The light bulb. Also, many thousands of inventions. We were cavemen, and through scientific research and our, uh, and our thinking, we have increased our lives into something a lot more better. And also, for the example of the atomic bombs, what could have happened uh, without that atomic bomb? Situations could have been a lot worse. We're not saying that, atom uh, that the atomic bombs was a good thing, but we're saying that it could have been one of the only solutions. The second example of the uh, opposition was that um, scientific research could in some cases invade privacy. However, ladies and gentlemen, these, uh, these measures are already in place. The NSA, the National Security Agency, has already measures in order to eavesdrop emails and phone calls. It's just that they don't do it because of federal legislation. It is not about scientific research that invades people's privacy, but about government laws that bans the in uh, intervention of privacy. So for these reasons, ladies and gentlemen, we beg you to propose this motion. Now, in our substantive case, I'm going to tell you why not limiting scientific research is beneficial. And first of all, I'm going to tell you that it saves lives. And secondly, I'm going to tell you that it saves the Earth. Scientific progress has saved human lives all the time. Now, look at uh, uh, leprosis, lepers. In the Middle Ages, this used to be a deadly disease that when it struck, none of the uh, people survived. But now, we have a cure for that. I, uh, leprosis, if discovered in the early stages, can be cured, and even the later stages, it can be cured, though not in some cases completely. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, our, 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 side of the, our side of the house is not uh, arguing that we don't we have to ban scientific research, but we have to place some limits on the scientific research that can be developed in some kind of dangerous areas and that can bring uh, terrific, uh, terrible consequences. Well, it's just that those areas that you proposed weren't exactly good, was it? Atomic bombs? Okay, that's too late for that, isn't it? Do we go back in time to stop the development of the atomic bomb? The uh, invasion of privacy. Do we stop the NSA from uh, developing a technology that could intercept emails and phone calls? We can't do that. What we can do is look to the future and, and also to look to the future and look for the benefits of scientific research can bring sir. towards humanity. No, thank you, sir. Now, also, 
Uh, we, uh, one third of cancer subjects can now be cured if uh, discovered in the early ages. And not also that, uh, so can organ impl implementation, which is based on a pr process of uh, dissectation, a process uh, that is not in Europe. And now all these things can help to save lives. And also stem cell research, which could replace uh, dead organs or diseased organs, in that case, that research could save human lives as well. Many people that could have died we can save through scientific research. We're doing that now, we have done that before, and we will do it again. Now, the second, thi uh, the second thing that we say uh, is that uh, scientific research saves the Earth. Now, let's talk in terms of the energy. Petroleum will run out in 40 years, and faced with a price that says, states $100 per barrel, we need a new energy source that will cure the problems that the, uh, this planet now faces. And that is discovering alternate energy sources and nuclear power. We're not saying that these things are necessarily banned in some countries, but we're saying that there are complicated, uh, complicated legal procedures and overturned court rulings that denied the establishment of these institutions. For example, in Britain, it, it makes the process of uh, building a nuclear power plant so complicated, over, uh, over 210 papers, in fact, in order to build a nuclear power plant, that building a nuclear power plant has so, become so difficult that it, that it uh, attains its energy source 70% less than its neighbor, which is France. And we must say that we must develop these things like a nuclear energy because in the long run, it can save the Earth, and that is including um, that is including uh, global warming. The North Pole is 10% smaller than in 1997, and Greenland has started building, uh, has started uh, experimental farming because it has gotten substantially warmer. And for these reasons, ladies and gentlemen, we beg you to propose this motion. Yeah, and his next speaker for the opposition side. Come on. And of course, be thinking about what you'll say for your fourth speeches. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm standing here as a second speaker of opposition to prove that we need limits on scientific research. Before, let, let me make some rebuttals against the proposition side. We are not saying that get, uh, we are not saying that let's get rid of uh, limits, uh, let's get rid of scientific research, but we're just saying that we should put limits on scientific research that the scientists may not go over the limit. Also, the, uh, the researches that Doyoung proposed can be done in the research is not uh, research Doyoung proposed can be can be studied within the limit, not not only outside of the limit. Now let me exp uh, explain some of the effects that no limited uh, scientific research can bring. First is environmental pro problems. Desert, uh, desertification, destruction of the ozone layer, and global warming can, cut, can be caused by uh, scientific research without limit. Ladies and gentlemen, will they not put limits on this? Will they exploit nature for the purpose of human? Isn't it environment became important these days? Also, uh, secondly, I will <laughs> Explain about the right, the moral. Stem cell research is based on embryo, embryos that are <coughs> harvested from women, and these women, used to <laughs> get embryos from them, suffer from pain after that. Also, animal research. Though there are still animal <coughs> law that limit animal research, <coughs> things uh, they kill animals because they should not reproduce, reproduce with, the, uh, with the experience of uh, using experiment. But, but they take out their algebra from them, which is very painful, uh, painful without, uh, not, uh, instead of uh, injection, which is allowed by law. 
Now, before let you me, proceed. No, thank you. Let me move on to the uh, unbeneficial way of this policy. Do we have to spend millions and billions of dollars on inv uh, in inventing medicine for rare disease that very few got invented? When thousands before you proceed. No, thank you. Thousands of people are dying because they in in the, uh, Malaysia because they do not have enough enough medicine. Even though one medicine or something is invented, it is usually very expensive. New technology. One. New technology. Scientific research is not is only for the rich. Why, why don't we make medicine technology already introduced cheaper? Why don't we spend money instead of scientific research, but on the distribution? No, thank you. Distribution of that kind of scientific technology. Not only scientific research, but also distribution of its <coughs> the technology is necessary. We are living in an era when that human body does not <coughs> return easily because he have absorbed too much antiseptic substances. Anyway, we live longer than before. Is scientific research bad or good or bad? We cannot answer. We do not have, <coughs> have a standard to measure science. Science is double-edged sword. By the right hand, it can, it can benefit humankind. But by the wrong hand, it can destroy human. Without this standard, removing limits from scientific research can harm humankind, can be dangerous. Thank you for listening, and Theo will sum up our debate. Yes, sir. For the prop. For the prop, yes. You oh. do not want to play. He's for the prop. Are you for the prop? Order, please. Proposition of today's debate uh, argued that uh, putting uh, not place uh, not placing limits on scientific research help us uh, save our lives, uh, save human lives, and also save the environment we, in which we, we live. And uh, I, <coughs> the opposition's argument that uh, there uh, is a certain need for uh, limits in sci on scientific research. Uh, but such things uh, from in the future is uh, uh, quite not so practical because uh, such uh, limits placed on science research, scientific research, may hinder the scientific de development in, uh, of the human mankind in the future. And uh, there are arguments that that said uh, abuses are plausible and. Scientific research themselves can be harmful, uh, though they are right. Uh, they, they, I think, uh, I, I, I am convinced that proposition's argument that they cannot be sacrificed for future uh, scientific development's sake is uh, right. Therefore, I go along with proposition, and I believe they are winning. Thank you. Thank you, Dan Our next speaker is Sam Tu. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.
to the notion this house would not place limits on scientific research. The opposition is saying that imagination and inclination com uh, combined with technology can bring unlimited possibilities to mankind. And we also understand that uh, science brought us light, heat, fuel, and, um, and health for all mankind. However, we are saying that science can also bring the termination of all that we've created. And because this is a notion about the limits, and because the proposition's majority, uh, the majority of the proposition's arguments were based on the fact that research itself is beneficial, we are, because we're arguing about p placing limits on scientific research, and because we think that scientific research is good as long as it remains inside the healthy scope of research, we are saying that since there must be a reason for these limits being in place in the first time, that we need to keep these keep these limits in place so that our uh, all the, all the achievements that we've uh, brought into our world so far will not be terminated because of one mistake. Thank you. Thank you both for <coughs> enthusiastic and spirited <coughs> speeches. Today we are going to be finishing the debate for the opposition side. We're going to make a wonderful <laughs> Today we're debating on a very important but yet yet not very known topic that we have to put some limits on scientific research. Uh, first, I am going to make some rebuttals of the for, against the proposition side, and then I'll, I will summarize our team's uh, positions. First, what the proposition team is totally missing is that we don't want scientific research to be gone. We are arguing that we have to set guidelines and limits in order to lead the way of science in a good way. Look at current situation. There are pollution. And human dignity is violated through reckless embryonic research. Yes, we think that we, we have to do all the po positive things that po po proposition side that has mentioned. Saving Surgeon Eric, curing millions of people through the science of medi me medicines. And this can be achieved within the limits to be placed. Limits will be implemented by the government laws on destructive on seat. No, thank you. On destructive research only <coughs> and exclusively. Ladies and gentlemen, reckless and careless plus unwearying development of science has brought disasters on Earth. Look and listen to the, all the news and newspapers. There are thousands of cases caused by science, destroyed environment, polluted water, and unbreathable air. Furthermore, clone babies without dignities. Genetically chain people for, no thank you. Chain people for productivity. There is no dig no dignity to human and to the earth due to these limited development of science. Yes, we, our side of town has meet that science has been helpful in many fields of society. However, it is it is its goal goalless development which is only focused on development itself caused many problems that I and I that and my teammates mention. So before I proceed. Yes. You have stated that you would limit uh, scientific research on like destructive areas, but are you aware that the scientific research is not in the status quo limited uh, on weapons production, which is in fact happens to be one of the biggest produ production manufacturing industries of the United States, but on uh, stuff like scientific research on saving human lives? What do you say to that, sir? So our, our, side, of, our side of this house is asserting that we, we don't have to put, uh, we have to set uh, correct limits correct regulation and correct guidelines. So let's look back on our arguments. First, Tao mentioned that there are potentially detrimental aspects in the scientific researches that are used to make destructive weapons and nuclear bombs. Also, uh, Herion mentioned that, before you proceed, no thank you. Herion mentioned that there are uh, many, many uh, disasters that science, scientific research, limitless science, scientific research can bring. Environment is destroyed and human dignity is destroyed and even animal <coughs> dignity is destroyed. Also we think that it is important to set the right guidelines to distribute the, dis develop the positive technology to all over the world. So ladies and gentlemen, aimless and goalless development of science will bring catastrophe in our world that humans have. Yes, we haven't been realizing the, the negative aspects that science could bring. But since we all, since we recognized it, we have to, we have to look around. Look, look, 
Look around. There is El Nino, La Nina, melting icebergs. And it's all happening because of some human ignorance until recent. And since we realize that it is, it is happening right now, and we and our side of our, our side of the house firmly believe that there should be certain limitations in order to save the world and us by, and us and ourselves. Thank you. Who is the final speaker of the debate? Let's welcome him. Okay, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, our House stands here to propose the motion this House would not place limits on scientific research. First, I will be going through the clash points of the debate, and then I will be summing up our points by summarizing them. Okay, first, Tao went up and said, uh, said something about the Nagasaki bombing of 1945. But, yes, technology is destructive, but, what it w but why it is destructive is not because of scientific research, but it is because of the way men use it. It's true, it's true that regulation should be put, but not on scientific research, but on how men should use it. Second, um, Hiran went up and said something about um, providing medicines to many sick people in Africa or other countries. But we thought that this was off topic because what does providing medicines to a lot of people living in some African town have to do with scientific research? Sir, um, no, thank you. <clears throat> Third, Taylor went up here and he said that they don't want scientific research to be gone but because of pollution and human dignity violated. They should put limits on scientific research. But what is true here is, is that in the status quo, that limits are not being placed on the largest, on the most destructive areas, the area of weapon pr production, Sorry. but not on, oh, no, thank you, sir. but not on, <laughs> ma'am, but not on genetic engineering. <laughs> they also stated something about correct guidelines but they never gave a single idea of what these correct guidelines are. Now I will go on to some uh, sir, on points. No, thank you, sir. Okay, first, Sohyun came up here and gave the example of the Korean scientific research. She said that, uh, she stated um, specifically some cases in which um, development is hampered in Korea because of strict regulations. In Korea, we are, in, scientists are not allowed because of severe limits on bioengineering after the case of Hong Kong. Oh, when you compare, no, thank you, sir. When you compare this to the cases of England, where they are developing these studies, bioengineering, sir. is it not evident that our country will be left behind in the future? Yes, sir. No. Isn't it inevitable that if there is scientific research, mankind is somehow is going to, uh, going to use it in a destructive way, so that is why we should put limits on scientific research. But it's not that contradictory because every field of research in the future could be used in a destructive way. Think of atomic bombs. At first they started using it as a fuel, as an energy. It didn't, they weren't going to use it as a bomb in the beginning, but it became a bomb. The same with Noble's dynamite. He didn't think that it would be used in you no know, follow-ups. So. <coughs> Okay, and then Doyoung stated that um, scientific research is used in many factory ways, in ways such as that can save human life because it can cure severe diseases as well as um, dangerous things, dangerous things, yeah. We should look to the future for benefits rather than looking at the status quo. And, and that would be all. Thank you. Should we stop the recorder, please?